same time, government has even found into more violence. Because at no point can you say, I do want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war. You have no freedom of economic choice. You still have to give in your money. You still have to give up your property. You still have to pay your taxes. Because if you didn't have a freedom of economic choice, what to do with your own money, government wouldn't threaten to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes. So this is how government is immoral then. This organization that calls itself the government only then knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions to you and I already okay. share. What do you think of that? I agree. Right? Well, there. Beautiful. Right? So... But I kind of see it as like a necessary evil, though. All right, and let's discuss what is government then, right? Mm -hmm. If it's evil, so well, you recognize it's evil, mm -hmm. right? And uh, government then, objectively, is this a monopoly, a violent monopoly on the services you and I want? Because I want roads, I want, I want law, I want security, I want uh, first class mail, I want alcohol. ABC has a monopoly on digital spirits, right? So government has a monopoly in these services, which though you don't have the economic freedom to cancel or unsubscribe as you would from a real business service or compete entrepreneurially to say, I could provide a better service that's not gonna be abusive or harmful to you, the consumer, right? So we realize what the is then of government, is this a monopoly, okay. right? So which means then anything that uh, government has monopolized, whenever a government monopoly, cost goes up, quality goes down, right? You look at uh, taxes always going up, you look at the quality of the roads, potholes, it's like driving around the moon here, uh, because there's no market competition. Right. But, so, all right, I'm going to go back on the road thing. Cause yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, talking yeah. to that dude about it. Uh, like, are you just in favor of privatized business, or, you know, private businesses uh, building roads and then, like, charging people to use their road? Is that what you're saying? Like a toll? Uh, I don't know what it would look like, right, when, uh, when the monopoly is abolished. Businesses already build the roads to begin with. Maybe it might be a toll, but at the same time, you know, when you go to a mall... You walk on that pathway, that's a road there too. And businesses pay for that and you don't pay anything. They also provide Segway security. They also provide internet and, 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 uh, and all kinds of stuff, right? Because um, they want you to get from point A to point B. So for the most part, you'll find businesses paying for all these roads to get you from point A to point B for the most part then, right? Um, on their own dime. Uh, so the collaboration of markets, of businesses' interests, will kind of build that on their own. But at the same time, it's not a technological marvel to put asphalt on the ground, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, you'll have um, all kinds of roads with all kinds of rules. Maybe you have one that uh, with cars that self-drive, you can drink on there all the time, right? Uh, because when government has a monopoly in roads, they also have a monopoly on, on the laws a, of the road. Not just the laws, but also the technology that they allow and do not allow which go uh, against the interests of a lot of people who fund their campaigns like the uh, oil companies, right? Because they don't want the technology to change. Yeah. Right? They need gasoline, they need oil, they need all that stuff. They don't need self-driving cars. They don't want it at least. Right? <laughs> they don't need electric cars, right? That put them out of business. So with that kind of interest, uh, you, you limit the kind of technology. You look how fast like computer technology has like every year, the engine in a car has remained stagnant, mm -hmm. right? That's so. True. That's true. Okay, uh, a little bit off topic, a little bit yeah, off yeah, yeah, topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, don't you feel that, like, I'm assuming you're an anarchist. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> uh, and an anar anarchy, just anarchist, this means without political rules. Yeah. So, right? like, don't you feel like um, the income inequality would just be, like, ridiculous? I mean, it's already pretty bad as it is. Don't you feel like it would just be, like, out of this world bad? Well, it's kind of bad as it is right now. Oh, yeah, uh, no, I know it's bad, but I mean, you don't think it would be you, at least, At least in, in a free society, nearly half your income would not be robbed. You're out of local, city, state, federal, uh, income, tariffs, imports, uh, licenses and premises, discriminate against the educated poor from competing. But don't you think it would be hard to even get a good wage? Why? Nearly half your income returned back to you that you can invest? Nearly, you work, you know how much? How many days out of the year you, you work to what pay taxes? There, what if there was Do you no know how government? Many, with no, I'm, I'm sorry, finish your do, do you know how many days out of the year you you work to pay your taxes? Probably about half, a quarter, I don't know. Oh, yeah, right, it's a lot. It's one third, over 100 days. 100 days of your productivity, your happiness, robbing straight from you. I know, yeah, it sucks, it sucks. Right? But uh, don't you feel like, man, what was I about to say? Uh, At that point, you can be as rich as you want to be or comfortable with where you want to be. 
And yeah. a, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I should finish it because I'll probably forget again. Like, don't you think that, uh, like, there would be no set minimum wage, though? Well, what is minimum wage? Minimum wage is... 730 or something? Well, I know. Oh, you're asking, like... Yeah, the definition, what it, minimum wage says that you're not allowed to trade with this person under an X arbitrary amount. Now, it's not just their labor that you're not allowed to trade because, therefore, it says it's criminal for you to trade with someone, even if it's voluntary, even if it's consensual, under an X arbitrary amount. It doesn't necessarily have to be your labor. It could be anything. You're not allowed to trade your car under $10,000. Like, what? It's worth $5,000. No one's going to buy it for $10,000, right? Um, so minimum wage doesn't create jobs. Well, it's not so much creating jobs, but just, like, sustaining people with somewhat of, like, a way to provide for themselves. Well, there we go. Well, there we go. Now, why do they not have a way to provide for themselves? Well, if they didn't have a job. Well, maybe. Or if they weren't being paid enough. It's not McDonald's that's robbing you of a living wage. It's government. Man. Nearly half your income stolen from you. I mean, that's definitely true. Right? That is a lot. But a lot. Especially if you're on a tight budget to begin with. We're talking about poor people, right? Mm -hmm. Tight budget to begin with. That is the last thing you want to do to continue to rob the poor, right? But Especially uh, money. Money is another thing that government has a monopoly. In 1913, there used to be competing currencies. Government doesn't like competition, so they made it legal and criminal. When you have a monopoly again on anything, quality goes down, and the dollar's lost 97% of its value. First, the poor, the worst. Every dollar they hide under the mattress just continues to depreciate. But don't you feel like, even though they're losing a lot of money, people lose a lot of money on minimum wage to taxes, like, don't you think that the minimum wage, well, obviously there wouldn't be a minimum wage. Right. Uh, don't you think that, like, some businesses would take advantage of that and pay their workers so low that it would still be even less than if they weren't getting taxes taken from them? I mean, they could be getting paid, like, $2 an hour. Right, so say, like, uh, Target wants to pay someone, like, a... Uh, ten dollars the next door company because anyone can compete now so the other company says well we'll, we'll give you eleven dollars because we value that kind of skill and we don't want you to turn our over weight it's ridiculous to keep losing employees right we'll keep we'll pay you an extra dollar for you to stay with us instead it's not just one company anymore it's a lot of different kinds of companies you a lot of different kinds you of markets. you don't think that eventually somebody would just be running the whole show though no one like, can no one how, can think about how like Walmart like puts out a bunch of companies out of business like if that got out of hand like couldn't eventually Walmart just pretty much be running the whole show you know in but terms the, of selling stuff? and anyone can compete in the market any time though that's that's the thing with government though you can restrict entry for new businesses to go in and raise the cost of a barrier right which makes it difficult for a lot of people to compete right. uh, and of course through a lot of the laws they say in the back of every law against businesses you'll find the exceptions uh, this applies to everyone except for these companies, the ones who are paying the uh, campaigns for those politicians who sign into law, right? So if you remove that, the barrier cost of entry, anyone can compete. There's no monopoly now. Um, and that's the beautiful thing about it, right? Because you find like upstarts all the time, like uh, beating their predecessors, right? You had uh, Google that beat Yahoo. <laughs> I'm actually thinking about starting my own business. Right. Oh, oh God! Stop. Uh, See? Yeah. Boat cleaning. <laughs> what is Boat it? Boat cleaning. Boat cleaning. Yeah. Oh, like, nice. Like scuba certified and stuff. Yeah. Underneath them and, yeah. See? And, and then you you look at your market. You look at your uh, your target market. You look uh, you know what will, you, the niche market. You look at different different ways uh, to kind of process. This happens all the time. Do a Kickstarter campaign. Uh, a lot of different ways to go about. It. But at least without the government, there's no market restriction against you competing. Uh, nearly half your income return. That's a lot more that you can invest. Right, and your own business ideas. Um, the sky is the limit at that point. Okay, uh, now what are your thoughts on like, um, in an anarchist society of uh, like, no policemen, no firemen, you know? Well, no, like no, no one else said anything about no security. Government has a monopoly on security that doesn't allow anyone to compete, right? Uh, or same thing with arbitration in terms of like judges or final arbitrators. Uh, so we can have all these things in a market, and whenever you have market competition, uh, the opposite occurs. Costs go down, quality goes up, right? Hey, I've been in the business of providing fire protection for 20 years. Don't listen to this guy. I give you three months for free, you know? So Look you're saying like they would, it would also be a private thing. Like it's like an insurance sort of thing. Right, right. Like I'll also like I'll pay some insurance to like these, you know, civil like cops. Yeah, basically. yeah, yeah. And. Uh, and I'll, you know, I'll call them up if, uh, 
They'll, they'll, they'll protect your security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll say, look, we're, we'll patrol the neighborhood, uh, this community here. Uh, look at our history. 20 years, never had to shoot anyone. We, we tame people, and but we're very good at our job. Look at all the customer feedback. Someone will say, well, we've been in the business for 25 years. Like, no, no, don't listen to them. We'll give you a discount, right? Uh, and you can see the effects of that because now it's consumer driven, not driven on how much people they give uh, tickets to, right? Okay. Who's going to decide um, punishments? You do. So, Virginia, for example, is one monopolized community. Majority preference forced into the minority preference. You abolish government, you have thousands and thousands of free societies based on consent catering to your lifestyle and preferences. Now you can have an apartment complex that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. The rules on that property, like the rules in your room, do not extend across the river into my room. I mean, right? I'm not, that's not really like what I'm looking for. Like, like well, what well, well, because before you move in there, you look, uh, what are the rules? What are the consequences? Right? Hey, well, all right. Who's going to decide those rules? You do. Well, like, all right. So, like, the person who sets up the golf course community says, well, people like golf and all this stuff. Here are the rules, right? Here's the pamphlet. Uh, I know there's a lot of people in the market competing. Or look at Florida, 55 and older communities, right? We provide the best great way for you to enjoy the, your retirement versus all the other competitors. Here's the rules, and here's uh, the f penalties if you break those rules. All right, you know, I agree. Right now, you have explicit consent versus government there's no there's no factual evidence to show of a contractual relationship with government but now in a, in a market real contracts exist all right let me get real hypothetical let's go here. let's shoot it let's say we're out in a field dude. we're on the desert like on the nothing, desert there's nothing going on out here Whoa, yeah. why are we doing the desert i mean i don't know I what just, we're just squaring up just, out there all right we're having a little dual thing we're, we're having like, a duel yeah and i just turn around and i shoot you all and right. uh like and and then i go out into the city and i'm like like, I cut your head off or some crazy stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I killed him, like, you know, like, mic drop. Yeah, the uh, drop. but the thing is... Like, what's going to happen? Who's going to decide you, what happens to me? You never got past the security on the front gate when you're approaching with the head. And because they're like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Because you can't just, like, magic appear in a city. There's security. I mean, I'll walk up to the security. Yeah, the security is like, uh, they, gonna they have, detain like, a you. Wall around the city or something? Yeah, you have, you have walls, like, how do you, you have walls on your, uh, in your room, right? You have walls in, uh, in your house, right? Yeah. Right? Golf course community have, have walls? Uh, 55? I don't know. the golf course is actually. Or the fences, right? Uh, 55 in order community. Uh, good walls make good neighbors, right? Uh, so you can have that sort of stuff, but you have security. Have all all right. stuff. So, so, you, so you can't just jump in the middle of nowhere and just cause mayhem and destruction because there's security right. there that'll stop you. Okay. All right. How do we end up in the desert, though? I mean, I don't know. That's just the <laughs> but we had to, a duel, so I guess you have... That's the place to settle things, man. Right. No well, well you can have communities that, said, that, can, that can say, hey, in the event that uh, you're against, against me, it'll be a $500 penalty fine. It could be a pillow fight. It could be two may enter, one may leave. It could be a duel and a desert. Okay. Right? So you have a lot of different ways you can settle disputes, but it's voluntary and consensual between the parties, just like duels used to be back then, right? Uh, so be... A, a rich, awesome, diverse difference between all these different communities, but you find the one that uh, works and suits best for you. Okay, now how about like military though? Uh, like, it's military security, right? The same thing. Uh, well, I mean, what if like, what if we became anarchists and like, North Korea isn't going to be anarchist and they decide to attack us? Like, are we just all going to be like, all right, let's, oh, just, no, no, let's no, just pull no. together? Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it, it, it just, well, guys. the thing is, uh, Spreading anarchy, like this world, this uh, we want the world has to be anarchy, right? So it doesn't end. So you're saying the whole world, the whole world, like right? Place All place. governments must be abolished. So it doesn't end once we abolish government tyranny here. We finally succeed when all government tyranny is abolished all over the world. So are you looking for like a one world order and then going to anarchy? I, I guess you could say. I mean, because that's about this the is this. I, I mean, anarchy. Right the essence of anarchy is consent. Here we have anarchy. Right? We already agree we don't use violence to solve our problems. That's anarchy. Government only knows how to solve problems through violence. That's statism. That's government. Okay. Right? So here's anarchy. Right? And most people already practice anarchy. So one whole world order will be one in that we're already aligns with our values that we agree with. If you ask anybody, they agree, yeah, I value consent. <laughs> okay. Most people do, right? So it will be more and more of a realization to align our virtues in that path. All right. So, um, what are your like? Do you think that it's really possible, like, in our lifetime? Yes. You do. Yes. We have over a hundred anarchists now here in Richmond. 
parents, children, all kinds of people. I mean, students. 100 compared to like the millions of people here. So, millions of people? There's no millions of people Hundreds in Richmond. Of thousands? Hundred, yeah, 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 like uh, they think over 200,000. Yeah, so uh, change doesn't start in the White House in D.C., countries you've ever been to, right? Starts within our own interpersonal relationships within ourselves, and then extends to our community here, right? It's a long term project. Yeah, that, I uh, mean, like within our lifetime, like that's. Well, at the, at the rate that we, uh, we're growing, it definitely could happen. We need a good, strong minority of uh, champions of liberty uh, to push forward, to have courage, right? And then all together that we can say no to government, no to taxation. And once you do that, the whole thing crumbles because taxation is the lifeblood. Without it, the whole thing's collapsed just like Detroit. But when that time arrives, we've already provided all the services uh, that we needed anyways, right? Okay. So, yes, it could well, definitely happen. you know, I'm going to tell you, like, now that I've thought about it, or now that you have talked to me, I will say my views on anarchy are better. Oh. Uh, however, I feel that it's just not going to happen. Like, and I think that if it was, and if it was like straight up here, like you're saying, like that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. But like, I just don't see it happening. You know. Like, well, it's, is that not something freedom you would want it to happen for you? I mean, it's, or for your children. Uh. You don't want your children to be born with social security tattoo numbers at the end of their feet, right? Well, you know, change is scary. Yeah, but the, the direction that we need to go to is one that's founded on principles, on virtue, mm -hmm. on what is good, on consent. I mean, it's just, it's a big step. It's, 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 step, it's up to you know? us to do it, man. It's hard, it's hard to, it is. It's hard to do. It is. That's why it takes courage to go against the grain. It's not yeah. going to be easy. I mean, it would definitely be something to, you know, really, really consider. Right? But, it's, uh, uh, it's us, we're, we're setting history here. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? I'm Cal. You can call me Moody. That's Moody. my last name. Ah, ah, yeah. so, uh, so do you vote, though? No, of course not. No, you don't vote? No, because, again, going back into uh, the example of how it works out, government is uh, violent and immoral, uh, voting uh, allows that to occur, right? But you don't think that, like, it would be beneficial to elect, to help elect somebody who um, would maybe be more uh, easier to persuade into anarchy? Uh, so, like, if you're a doctor and you have, like, someone with a lot of surge, a lot of problems, like, it's going to take a long time, right? It's like triage. Like, I'd rather help someone who has, like, band-aid problems and stuff like that. I can help them really quickly, faster amount of time efficiency-wise, right? So someone like a politician it will take a long time to try to talk to versus everyone else, right? And the amount of time I could talk to uh, one of them, I, could probably, I would have talked to, like, a thousand other people. And I think uh, those numbers are a lot more important than one person who's very stubborn. Okay. Right? And at the same time, there's no factual evidence to show that politics has ever set anyone free. Um, the fact that you and I were born as tax slaves is proof of that. That it's centuries and centuries of people trying to achieve freedom to politics and political parties and all this stuff and have, has never worked. The fact that we still have to contend with this today, you and I. Um, is evidence enough? So let's try something that's never been done before. Let's go anti-political. Okay. No political parties. No politicians. Right. Scary though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Pleasure, man. Let me give you a flyer. Keep in uh, contact with me. We do. Uh, we have parties all the time and all that stuff, man. Like party parties. Party or... parties. Yes. Like party parties. Party party. All right. When are they? Uh, the next so one's going to be uh, not this Saturday. Next Saturday. Uh, Send, find me. Send me a message. Uh, oh, I already know I can't make that one. But okay, but we do it monthly. At the same right. time, we do a lot of other, other good stuff. So, all right, man. Yeah. I'm gonna check it out. Though. All right, Moody. All Take right. good care, buddy. This video is brought to you by Stuart Brock. Thanks, buddy, for assisting me in being the best there is at what I do. And for those that also want to help me in this endeavor to maximize my potential, to optimize my time, energy, and commitment, check out the Patron account in the description below to to find out how. And with that, I'll see you guys at the victory party and take good care.
and the greater responsibility, yes, it's still our home. We should know by now that the system's designed for our demise. If we ain't wise, we'll be left behind. The dollar signs rule, but what about the fool who falls victim to the material? 